Good day everybody, it's Karinella here and welcome back to Only the Holy. So last time we were, or Nova was Meli's guinea pig. So let's see what happens today. Later, Meli related today's events to Cass, who appeared increasingly alarmed. It had been, Nova agreed, a rather exciting day. Perhaps that was why Nova was listless that night. Night. Nova had not particularly struggled in complying with everyone's strict strictures, but tonight the need for movement was all-consuming, exaggerated by Cass's and Melly's soft breaths, the still, quiet quilt of night. Cass's admonishment that people stayed in a bed at night was a pin through Nova, but staying still was stifling. Nova slowly folded up and into standing, carefully so as not to disturb the gossamer dark web of stillness, a crept. When the tavern door yeah, when the tavern door was behind and the outside ahead, A felt constraints come loose and unravel. It had been a long time since before time began for Nova, since A had been alone, and the alone felt changed now. A walked, slowly and aimlessly, no goal except for the walking. The dull, dissolute ache was ever present now. Times, like now, it was piercing, snaking through Nova's being. A did not have any answers for why A didn't give in, but the thought of what would happen if A came undone. The air was mist in rain, the moon pale and wavering behind shifting cloud cover. This mu music is epic by the way. Like super crazy. I like it. There were no answers here either. When it became more bearable, daylight not far away, A crept back into a sleepless bed and waited. Nova was almost surprised to be bed with Meli again, the night having washed everything away. Meli perhaps mistook surprise for a reluctance, or perhaps wanted to reassure herself. Not much longer, not much I can do, and you'll be in the way unless I think of something new. Wow, a lot of changing sceneries. They went to the field, then farther. Millie seemed almost reluctant to so stop. When she did, it was abrupt. You made that barrier of yours. Can you take it down and bring it, ba bring it back at will? Yes. A quick answer. Have you done it already then? Uh, yes. Millie's frown became slightly less severe. It didn't destroy everything then. Can you open up a small hole in your chest? Close it immediately if I tell you to stop. Whoa, that's creepy. That's very creepy looking. Nova slowly obliged, the unfamiliar sensation of the world right up against the void, at once squeamishly uncomfortable and like breathing after one thought dead for cut and how. The egg growled right like thunder. Melly poked about and returned with a long stick. Without much preamble, she shoved the end of it in the void in Nova's chest. It was a drop, too, greedily devoured and quickly gone. Nova stood deadly still, frozen, though some noise must have escaped her lips. Melly pulled the somewhat short stick clear and frown, frowned at the end of it. You shouldn't speak either. You have no vocal cords. No resistance with the stick. One moment there, the next gone. Nova dazed gazed uncomprehendingly at her. Can you try to let something touch the void and not devoid? Can you keep from destroying something that touches you? I don't know. I've never tried. It felt like a lie. Wasn't this keen to let them touch things? Age couldn't focus. Try now. 
Nova didn't know how. A tensed against the stick, Meli brought Nia again, trying to tell Esef to keep the stick whole. But a being seemed to reach out, greedy for the world laid out before it. Why? Why listen? The why questions always seemed hardest to answer. Meli examined the even shorter stick, disappointed but not surprised. She drew it out into the grass. Nova's eyes followed its trajectory. Did you feel like you had any control over consuming the stick? It took a moment for Nova to remember to speak. The hole in her chest burned. Um, no. Maybe we'll try again later, though it seems unlikely. One more test for today. I don't want to keep you open too long. Meli extended her hand, sparks of electricity crackling around her fingertips. Power cracked like a whip into Nova. A devoured the energy like everything else, though it was an empty sort of sustenance and only accentuated the ache. Stop, you can stop now. Nova clearly realized it was the second time Meli had said this. A skin knit back together, more slowly than it had parted, and sensation was safely muffled again. Meli waited quietly while A pulled the scattered piece of ASF back together. I... I'm not meant to be a person, am I? Why do you say that? Her question was serious, her eyes eating, but betraying no emotion. I, I, I feel like I'm going to fly apart. So much tension in holding together. It would be easier to not. My brother thinks you can be a person. I'd like you to not disappoint him. She turned as if to head back, then half turned her head to Nova. Those born people can have the same questions. Sometimes it's not only the people around you who keep you a person. How determined are you? Nova did not have an answer, but Meli did not seem to expect one. Though Meli didn't carry him, it felt like she was the one helping Nova get back today, though Nova couldn't pinpoint why. By the time they got back to the inn, it was not so hard to hold herself to together. Meli told Cass they were done with the test for now, and he could have his dangerous lucky back the next day. Cass smiled. Wonderful. Then he hesitated and glanced towards Meli. She gave a small shake of her head. Cass smiled again, but it was more shaky. We should celebrate then. Let's all sit in the common room tonight. Farchorid is leaving tomorrow morning, and I'd like to say goodbye. Can that one behave in a crowd? We were out in the common room while you were gone. Playing cards? Yes, I heard. I also heard... No. That you were playing? Don't say it. Man in the holly. Ah. Ah, right. Because Cass doesn't like man in the holly because... Is like supposed to be good at it or something. As soon as they settled at a table in the inn, however, Cass, Cass will, Cass, Cass's ill humor melted away and he started talking with everyone, eventually abandoning the table as he saw people he wanted to talk to. As the evening wore on, the room filled and Nova found herself on the periphery with Meli who was sipping a drink and observing with watchful eyes. Flashes of gas would appear in the crowd. Brief snatches quickly swallowed. The warm glow of candles shivered like liquid against the silky shadows, the same way Russia's laughter glowed against the quiet world. Soon there were calls for song, though it seemed like most everyone answered their own call. There were several fast starts where different groups simultaneously started different songs. 
Then one strong voice rang out, cast off, no one realized, and everyone else joined in after a couple lines. Kind friends and companions come join me in rhyme. Cass emerged from the crowd and flopped down next to Melly. No singing for me, though that means I get a bit of a break. Let us drink and be merry, our grief to refrain. Come now, you have a lovely singing voice, you sang hymns back home. Exactly. For we may and might never are meet here again. Cash surveyed the crowd, a smile ducking at the corners of his eyes. Parturit, cast off Miss Mayberry. We will surely see them again, right? We'll all behave in the same way. Unlikely. They wouldn't be sticking around close to the border, not unless they wanted to keep moving and keep moving. That's right. Where are we off to next again? Hartsward. If ever we should meet again by land or by sea. The room smelled hot, melted wax and lingering sun, and the dry, sharp scent of alcohol. A strange disconnect. Nah. A strange disconnect snapped through Noah. He blinked at all the revelers, intoning the same words, and then back at Melly and Cass, shadowed and silent, the light and words rippling off of them. I will always remember your kindness to me. Sorry, I don't know how to sing. Not at all. Not all the revelers had stayed happy. By the end of the evening, some were crying into their cups, and by morning, Bajorit was leaving with more people than planned. Cass, and by extension Nova, went to see them off. It was a somber affair. There was no laughter to fill the silence today, or even tears, just a desolate wind, thin and lo lonely. Amidst the suicide of hugging, those leaving gave hasty instructions to feel free to take anything from the fields, to finish up that cloth on the loom if there was time, to slaughter a lamb they could not take with them. And then they were gone, twinkling into the distance on the dusty road. The well wishers watched for a time, then headed off. Meals had to be made, crops tended, tears mended. Is this going to end? This seems like this story is going to end soon. Uh, when, when will they be back? Nova, they are not going back, coming back. That might have been the end of it. But that night, more people announced their intentions of leaving. Nova pondered until the three of them retreated to the room to the night, for the night. Uh, why is everyone leaving? Cass and Millie gave each other a look, though the look was not the same for both of them. Cass, Cass's was mostly surprise, with a dash of guilt, while Millie's was sidelong and cool. Oh, um... This is what you wanted, isn't it? Your half-baked -bake plan to speak to the team. You wanted to ask it to stop, since we can apparently communicate now. I don't know if it's a good time. There is no good time, or the only good time is immediately. Gus lowered his voice. I don't know if Nova's ready. I'm ready. What for? Nova is so cute, so innocent and naive. Gas tilted his head back at Melly in a meaningful way. People are leaving because their homes will be destroyed. This land will be uninhabitable. Our life will vanish. There will be nothing. There was one still moment where Cass closed his eyes. Nothing? Like me? You could say exactly like you. Nova, do you know what you do? Rather, what the no void does? 
I... It seemed a simple question at first. What did Nova do? Nova stood here. Nova talked to Cass and Melly. Nova saw and heard and touched. Nova ached. Live? Cass grinned at Melly, who stared totally back. The void divorce, that's all it has ever done. Until you showed up. That hasn't changed anything. The void is still devouring. For a sharp moment, Nova reeled off balance, like A had been displaced. When A snapped back to A self, it was so strange A was still standing. Had, in fact, not moved at all. That a fainter, fainter echo of, of balance reeled through them again. Nova had not been devouring. I'd been very careful not to. Except those small instances, which didn't count. Couldn't count for how unsatisfying they were. But of course, the void was devouring. The main contingent Nova had almost forgotten. The part that was not this little offshoot, unfit for the void's purpose. Purpose? Even that could be called into question now. Nova had never expected the word to complicate things. Cass frowned unhappily at Melly, while she, unperpeted, waited quietly for Nova to come back to herself. Did you realize the void was still devouring? Perhaps in the back of my mind, though, I'd forgotten. We shouldn't have brought it up. The problem won't go away by forgetting about it. Void, do you know what happens when something is devoured? I... Uh... A scatter of rain appeared on the window and it became obvious Nova had no continuation. It is gone. Do you enjoy anything about this world? Even the act of consuming it? Because it... She struck suddenly for a bulky roll of parchment showed beneath her bed. Melly, stop. I'm not the one who should stop. The parchment unrolled, blanketing the small table. In this map, this infinitesimally small dot represents this entire village. Everything here is land, here is water, and this advancing line, that's the void, which has followed countless other villages. Relentlessly destroyed art and architecture, and literature, and people. And it's coming closer. You are coming closer. So that's why people are fleeing. Melly. I'm done. The mass of lines resolved into a carved out continent, slivers of nothingness encroaching towards the center. The latest line demarcating the boundaries of the void passed perilously close to the speck Melly pointed out as Lakewood. Um, it is what it is? Because I can't really say it's horrible, because that's me. But I can't say it's impressive, because that would be just mean. So, it is what it is? Nova felt like something was expected of M at the heated revelation, but could not fathom what. A tried all the same. Uh, it's a nice map. You like the map? Great! Maybe you'll at least want to save it from being devoured. I told you A wasn't ready. Don't get mad at them for not understanding. Nova looked at the map again. Perhaps there was some trick to it. If there was, A couldn't find it. Just Lakewood and there the void, advances steadily as Melly had said. A wondered idly if A would be swept up and back into the void immediately when it passed through. A twinge of sadness spread at Nova at the thought. If nothing, if nothing else, a time as Nova had certainly been interesting. Understand or not, we can't waste time. Can you control the void's devouring? 
I don't know that one without me. But you can control your your devouring. The egg mocked. Yes. So there must be some way. The world took a breath. That's not always how it works, Mels. It could be unconscious, like breathing. Cass made me get your permission piece before. Now you know more of my objectives. What is your answer? She turned her gaze on Cass, who looked sick. Can't imagine anything changing. Why stop the void? Hmm. I mean, this one? Whatever I do, I don't think anything will change. The egg agreed, but Cass seemed to sh shake himself awake. You forget, you are not in the void anymore, but the world where everything changes. You change at least once already, by existing. Give it some time. I suppose you can think what you like. I'll keep trying. Night had long since crept upon them, and Melly tabled the discussion. It was just as well, for Noah had to process all the new information. Since Noah had broken sleeping protocol, it found that walking helped, a sort of thoughtless motion that freed up the mind for other things. But Noah's ruminations did not last long. Dawn broke sudden, startling them. It was too easy to think the world unchanging in the quiet shadow of, shadows of night. The day went on much the same as before, though Cass didn't speak much while working. Perhaps he was doing his processing now, being too busy with sleep to do it at night. At the end of the workday, Cass made vague remarks about having to do something and for Noah to go on ahead. So Nova delivered the produce. Didn't know what to say when Miss Mayberry chastised cast off for giving them too little. Now there were three of them and then was at, la at a loss on what to do. Nova wandered around till they came to a door a vaguely new led to the stables. At first, a thought perhaps it'd been mistaken about the doorness of the door or the door did not like Nova. But someone called, it sticks sometimes, give her a good show. The wood gave an oomph of displeasure as the door gave away, and it squealed when Nova tried to close it again. I'm sorry. The scent of hay and horse permeated the air, along with sounds of snuffling, tails fishing, the glop of hooves but Bowed restlessly at the ground. A corridor with little rooms stretched ahead, though the doors were very small. A long face stared curiously at Noah from a bow wand. I think this is a good point to leave this episode to. I think the next, next episode is going to be the last one. And I feel like if I leave here, we can have a nice and long episode for the last one. So I hope you liked it and Bye-bye!